Today is Thursday of EAA AirVenture, and I am here at the week's hangar with none other than Mike Goulian. If you watched my Oshkosh series, you know that the one experience I was the most excited for at Oshkosh was to fly with Mike Goulian, and Bose was able to help me set up this opportunity, and we are here. We're going to go do some aerobatics in an extra 330 LX. I have never flown in an extra, and I am so excited. A huge thank you to Bose for sponsoring today's video and making this opportunity possible. On today's flight, Mike and I will both be wearing our Bose A30 headsets. I started flying with a different headset brand before I knew if aviation was something that I wanted to continue in life. And when I passed my private pilot check ride, I knew that I was in it for the long run. So I went and got my first pair of Bose A20s. Since then, I've had the same pair of Bose A20s for about four years from the moment I passed my private pilot check ride until the A30s came out. And ever since then, I've been flying with the A30s. Let's hop in the plane, get ready, get a parachute on and get going. Before Mike and I went flying, I had a lot of questions and Steve, one of the pilots on Mike Gullion's team, was happy to answer all of them. I'd never flown in an extra before, let alone an extra 330LX, so I had a ton of questions about the performance and systems of the airplane. But you've probably heard of an extra 3 so like just a 300. Yes. So the difference is uh, those have 540, not 580. Okay. Uh, uh, air cluster minus 50 airplane. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Queen 360. So okay. I'll take off in the center tank, switch to the wing tanks, basically till it burns out. And yes. I treat the center tank gas because that's basically average cruise tower, that's 45 minutes worth of gas. Mm -hmm. um, so I treat that as my reserve. So like, if I go to the center tank, I need to be basically my reserve. Yeah, gotcha, that makes sense. I take it when you fly solo, you fly solo back. Correct, yep. We're gonna lie and tell everybody we do 12 Gs and, yeah. you know, yeah. defy <laughs> death and everything else. The airplane itself is so fun. So, like, we're just gonna go out and And the airspace is closed, it's just us. Yeah. We go out there on the runway, we're just out there cruising around, having a good time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Extra 330 had so much power on takeoff thanks to its IO580 up front. Mike gave me the controls as soon as we were airborne and had me aim for about 100 knots in the climb out. I think the Extra 330 felt even faster to me because I had just spent the week prior flying my slow 140 across the country for 25 hours straight. After taking off from Oshkosh, we made a right crosswind departure to the north to go do all of our maneuvers. While we were flying north, Mike explained that because the extra is really responsive, you really only want to fly it with your fingertips. So he explained how I should be holding the controls, and then he gave me the controls. The first thing Mike had me do was do a few shallow turns just to get a feel for the airplane. You can see me wobbling back and forth in this clip because the controls are so sensitive. Mike also used the turns as an opportunity to point out the closest airport in case of an emergency. Lazy 8s were my favorite part of my commercial training, so I really enjoyed this part of the flight and it was a good middle ground between normal turns and the maneuvers that we'd be doing later. Next, we try to roll. To set up for the maneuver, Mike had me raise the nose until my heels were on the horizon. My second attempt at a roll was much, much better than my first one, I think just because I had a better feel for the roll rate of the airplane. After doing a few more rolls, we did a loop. Mike explained where I should be looking throughout the maneuver, first at the left side at the wing, then to the back in order to maintain spatial orientation. Yeah. My favorite maneuver of the whole flight was the hammerhead. We started by descending to get enough airspeed, then we pulled the nose straight up and continued upwards until we slowed down almost to stall speed. At this point, Mike kicked in the rudder and we went right back down. Anyone can tell that Mike has been doing this for years just by watching him, but flying with him was an incredible experience. He really was one with the airplane. 
Before heading back to Oshkosh, we did one more maneuver just for fun. Mike had me tighten my seatbelt and then he flipped us over and we flew around inverted. And we are not gonna talk about my hair in the next clip. <laughs> So you can see it's just like it's so smooth, right? And then you just think about it. I mean, like when we were doing the sort of the big sort of lazy eights and stuff, it, it does. You're just making the airplane move yeah. and it gets here and sort of letting it flow down. Yeah. That won't be our last time flying. Again. No, definitely not. <laughs> I've had the A30s for about six months now. Just before they came out, I was able to give them a try. And the big thing for me that I love about the A30s is the comfort. I just flew my Cessna 140 across the country for 25 hours to come to Oshkosh, and I never had to adjust the headset in any way, even with sunglasses, a baseball hat, anything to be comfortable in the headset. And the noise canceling, of course, is great as always. Having good communication while I'm flying and being able to communicate effectively is so crucial to being successful on any flight, especially in the area that I'm flying in now, busy Southern California airspace. There is so much going on, there's lots of traffic, ATC is giving instructions left and right, and having a Bose headset makes it easy to hear what they're saying and respond effectively. I loved my A20s before, I didn't think they could get any better to be honest, and Somehow they did and they're just so comfortable and I will wear them until the next headset comes out. <laughs> 